All right, it's 12.05, so let's get the ball rolling. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and as always, we are joined by the best and brightest in the Pocket Network ecosystem. Uh, we have Blade on the call with us today, and I know that uh, they have uh, just spun up their gateway this week and are handling the takeover of the public endpoints. So I'm going to give the mic to him and uh, let him talk a little bit about uh, what they've got going on. Cool. Thanks, Jinx, for the handoff. Um, yeah, it's been some quite some time since I joined uh, the Note Runner calls, which I believe is now called the Ecosystem Call. Um, it's good to see everyone. Seems like there's some familiar names in this chat. Um, and so yeah, uh, Nodes uh, in the last let's say seven to ten days has picked up the Pocket Network free traffic. Um, as you all have seen on the blog posts and as well as the announcements is that unfortunately we couldn't do a seamless migration. And so we had communications out to the community and um, as well across different ecosystems to you know, change their endpoints. And ultimately uh, the plan was to shift all this pop, uh, traffic over to Pocket Network. And uh, of course, you know, at the same time, um, we were still working on our gateway integration um, within our platform. And the best way for us to feasibly tie this in was as well, coincidentally, into the free endpoints or the public endpoints. I'm going to share my screen right quick to give you guys a brief overview of how the traffic has grown over the last seven days and how much of the percentage of the traffic is actually going to Pocket Network. <laughs> Give me one second, see if I can find a way to share this. All right, I think, let me know when you can see my screen. There we go. Yep, we can see it. All right. And so, um, yeah, around November the 1st is when the first cutoff happened and uh, over the last seven days, I think that's about seven days, yeah. Over the last seven days, uh, the traffic has incrementally been picking up. Um, we started off at, you know, a rough number of 400K, but as we expected, uh, more traffic continued to flow in. And we're getting to the point where we're serving nearly over 100 million requests a day at peak. Uh, day over day, the requests per the requests in general have been peaking up. Um, and what this shows is that there's adoption in the pocket endpoints and the pocket community can still continue to offer public RPCs. Um, we expect that eventually uh, we will see a saturation point where you know this number stabilizes. So do not expect, I guess, a linear graph for this potentially to go up. But as well, we have some pretty cool insights on you know, exactly which chains is it being made from, as well, which actors are actually making the calls from an IP perspective. And then as well, uh, the ultimate goal really is that you know, public endpoints, at least from our perspective, is a pipeline into our platform. And so, Whenever people are using our public endpoints, it's more of a, a trial, right? Um, to you know, get a better idea of what we can serve and how our performance is, and then ultimately that encourages them to um, sign into our platform and create their own dedicated endpoints. And so right now, I believe that the curtain, there are rate limits in place for these endpoints to encourage that behavior. And we're continuously observing for specific actors that may be trying to, you know, go past that um, and, you know, stop those actors as well. And so um, I would say that once we filter out those actors, um, this is probably going to drop to maybe, I, I think what we're seeing right now is that perhaps, you know, 40 million or about 45 million of the traffic right now is being consumed by uh, a couple of actors at best. And then the rest are pre-distributed across like 200K requests 
a day to anywhere to like 2 million requests a day, which is normal. And then we have some actors who may be somehow doing 20 million, which shouldn't be allowed. And so we're going to kick go uh, rate limit those actors even more aggressively so that way they can't make those type of calls without signing up into the platform. Um, some of these traffic is currently going to our centralized nodes. However, once again, uh, we don't really benefit from putting it into our centralized nodes. Um, coincidentally, at the same time, uh, we're rolling out our gateway integration. So we expect uh, long term, 100% of this traffic is going to go to Pocket Network, um, at least in terms of the feature, the public endpoints. And so we're at approximately a 10% rollout right now. Um, we didn't know how much of the traffic would get adopted. And so we had to play it carefully on our rollout. As you can see, it started off with like only 300K requests. And then we went up to 100 million requests, which is a significant jump, right? And so, you know, we're taking a relatively conservative approach so that way users aren't impacted because we have to account for the fact that there was already a, a migration in place to change their endpoints. And we wanted to make sure that was seamless and then comfortably uh, change that over to Pocket Network. And so uh, on chain, at least, you will start to see that Nodis is sending relays to the network. And then as well, we are going to be paying the next gateway fee. Uh, whenever that time comes. I think I'll stop there, see if anyone has some questions about it. But yeah, I just want to give you all a brief update on the public endpoints and the traffic there. Beautiful. Anybody have questions about that? Uh, Fred says, congrats, Blade and the Nodis team. Definitely. It's uh, yeah, it's the amount of work involved with uh, setting up a gateway and Im immediately spinning up scale traffic is uh, certainly something to be congratulated. Super excited. Hey, Blade. Romero, I do not have your stats at the time. I can't answer <laughs> your <questions. laughs> It was not that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, I was going to ask you, we are seeing 100 million relays per day right now. We are. However, um, today we're going to be rolling out a change to rate limit specific actors a little bit more aggressively. Um, for some reason, somehow, some actors are going past 25 requests per second. I believe I identified the root cause for this, so we're going to put in uh, some more preventive measures. Um, so basically, in our other internal dashboards, um, I don't want to show them on this chat because it will expose our IP address, but we're seeing some clients um, using the public RPC endpoints at like 20 million a day, um, which is far above what we think is appropriate for using a public endpoint, and they should be encouraged to use our platform instead. And so once we kick off those couple of actors, I think there's like two or three of them, the traffic should uh, be a little bit less, but at the same time, you know, day over day, we're seeing more adoption of the endpoints. Um, I believe in August, the estimate by Grove was that there was approximately 280 million relays done on the public endpoints. And so that's kind of like, you know, the, I guess the, expected kind of like, you know, what's the best case scenario on adoption? Um, and we'll have to continuously monitor to see, you know, how far we get on that. Yeah, but I was actually going to ask you, since uh, group stopped serving the public endpoint, the number of release was reduced okay. from 900 million to approximately 400 million. So, and you're seeing right now, only 100 million on your endpoint. So where is the other 300? Uh, have you any clue of what happened to that traffic? Is people that didn't change, you are filtering more? Uh, so the estimate, I'm reading the chat right now. So the estimate we got was in August, which was about you know 280 million. Fred is mentioning 
now in the chat that October was 500 plus million. And so I believe that may answer your question on uh, why you're seeing a difference. But as well, another reason why you may be seeing the difference is that keep in mind, we're only rolling out approximately 10% to the network right now. Okay, so roughly 90% is still centralized from a, um, a relays perspective. <laughs> Correct. Okay. And we just so do this, that for, hey, go ahead. This graph is only what you are piping to pocket. No, Not this is total, total. Oh, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I still don't understand where the other 400 million relays went. Um, I can comment a little bit. Our internal metrics over the last week have shown a really large, or several very large cliffs of users on the public endpoint. And I think rate limiting will turn these individual actors uh, away from continually, continuously using that service. So. Yeah, one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit over the, the last uh, few weeks, and especially with network re-architecture, is uh, how much spamming was occurring on some of these public endpoints. And we've seen, I mean, even in casual conversations in the Telegram groups, uh, we've seen some people talking about using series of, of public endpoints and, and doing some dynamic rotation between public endpoints for things like health checks on nodes and such uh, in a way that really stacked up a lot of relays. So, I mean, it's, you know, given that there's actually enforcement that's occurring right now uh, through the gateways, um, that's, you know, a, a super important thing to differentiate between casual abuse of the public endpoints versus, you know, actual real relay transactions that are serving the network and that are um, you know, at the very least, private endpoint accounts and and ideally, you know, paid uh, over the free tier, uh, assuming that they're doing more than, you know, 100,000 or 200,000, whatever the, the limits on, on free tier relay requests are. So, yeah, I, I think it's very encouraging to see that uh, the the number of paid relays still going through the network is is very healthy. Um, and that, you know, ideally all gateways that are serving pocket network are serving, you know, a, a very, very healthy portion of paid relays versus just free to your endpoints. Yeah, maybe I, I could speak with you offline as well, Ribeiro, um, see where we can find the low differences. Uh, but uh, one last thing I want to show you all is Kind of like the breakdown in traffic and how we're seeing it right now in the last 24 hours i believe you should ignore Claitlin and kava there are some i believe there's one actor and on Claitlin that's probably taking up like 20 million requests and then same kava as well and so you know that's already 40 million relays that are likely going to be booted off and then the other relays that we're seeing in each chain, they have a healthy distribution in uh, IP addresses and, uh, you know, uh, reasonable use. What's your timeline on on uh, scaling up relays being sent through Pocket Network? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we have to be careful about it, just given how fast traffic is kind of picking up. Um, uh, isn't to our best benefit to actually send them to Pocket um, as soon as possible. But at the same time, uh, got to play conservative about it as we pick up more and more traffic just to make sure that, you know, users aren't impacted because we're concerned that, you know, if there's anything wrong with our Pocket integration, then that affects the end user and they're already in the middle of a migration from one endpoint to another. Um, and so, you know, in terms of concrete timelines, I believe it's going to be like a week or so before we go all the way up to 100%. But that really depends on our confidence and where we see uh, saturation in uh, requests as well. Beautiful. Other questions?
Cool. Um, one last thing I'll mention, and it has to be brief for now, just for time sakes, and I want to make sure everyone else can have time to talk, is that uh, starting next week, uh, we'll be working more on the open source side of uh, Pocket Integration. And so there will be more information released and more open development on, in general, of uh, what our vision of the gateway stack is. I don't believe I had the opportunity to really announce it to the ecosystem uh, chats, but I'll definitely make sure that we have time to go over what of Nodi's vision is for the gateway stack. Um, but effectively, what it is, is we envision it to be a way for anyone to really spin up a gateway with ease, whether you're an enterprise or if you're just a single uh, indie developer that wants to tap into the pocket network. Um, and that includes a lot of different services that will handle sending a relay to the network to uh, managing your app state keys. Beautiful. Oh. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate Thanks for joining us. We appreciate the update and uh, glad to have some more gateways joining the ecosystem. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited for that one, actually. Um, there's, um, I'm not, I can't release any names or anything like that, but. Uh, if you go inside our Discord channel, there's a specific person asking about the gateway integration. That's one person. And then as well, I know there's an active effort to bring in more gateways into the ecosystem led by PNF. And so, you know, what I believe long term, what will happen is that as we get more gateways into the ecosystem, uh, this allows for a lot more conversations about sustainable economics to what actually makes sense for the protocol and just so many more, uh, you know, community led efforts to shape up what pocket will be in the future. So really, really excited for it all. 100%. Could you share uh, a link to the Discord here so everyone can shine? Can't believe you're not in my Discord already. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was definitely send over to you. Thanks. Congrats, Blade. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Well, that was a cool way to start uh, things off. Zach, since you're here, uh, any updates on the PNF side that you want to talk about? I had a few people asking about the uh, uh, community call rescheduling and such. I'm uh, at the airport, so apologies for this being loud. No worries. Let me type it into the chat. That might be easier here, but we don't have any big updates. We are heading to, I'm in the airport, going to Barcelona and then DevConnect, so um, you'll be seeing a lot of us there. So if anybody is in Istanbul, please message us and, and let's meet up. Oh, yeah. And uh, we are actually going to run a, a community uh, photo scavenger hunt uh, during the Istanbul Dev Connect. So um, spread the word that anyone who's going to be there, we're going to be uh, putting some bounties out for photos with team members and foundation members and such. Okay, so after uh, Zach types in his update, I'll go ahead and read that out. Um, Fred or Gabby, you guys uh, have any Grove updates you want to put out? I don't think anything major to report this week. Um, I don't know, Gabby, you got anything? Nope, not on my side. Beautiful. Okay, well, in oh, that case... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. go ahead. Uh, I'll say we did fix the forum yesterday. Uh, yeah, forum emails weren't working, but forum should be working now. If anybody's not getting the emails from the forum, just let me know. So, like, password resets weren't working, new users couldn't register. Um, that should be fixed. And uh, yeah, uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup in our login server yesterday, but that seems to be resolved too. So uh, that's it. Perfect. Good updates there. I always appreciate your work uh, supporting the ecosystem and keeping the forum running. Uh, Zach mentions uh, we're pushing uh, community calls to post DevConnect. Uh, he'll drop some updates next week and announcements after the offsite. And uh, they're aiming to have a roadmap plus some announcements during DevConnect. So. Uh, for everyone who's been asking out in the uh, in the Telegram groups, when next announcement, uh, I imagine most of that's going to be popping off next week. So stay tuned and keep your eyes open.
All right. Well, in that case, we've covered uh, all the cool stuff at the beginning uh, that we had set up. So it's an uh, open floor now. Anybody got any uh, questions, thoughts, uh, concerns, opinions, other things? If uh, I could ma make an announcement, if you Absolutely. allow me. Absolutely. Bring it. Um, let me share the screen. Can you see that? Yep. Ooh. Hey. OK. Yeah. We took a little more. It took a little more than we expected it, but we are going finally to release our new site. It's, it's going to be more than a site, but what we are presenting right here is like a one-stop uh, search bar for all the things about the community. We have created, we've been tracking all forum, Discord, Telegram, documentation, and ev everything for a while. And we have created uh, a database. And on top of that, we created a search engine so we can now explore all the community, all the information in the pocket community. So what is this product exactly? It's a search engine. For example, if you would like to know what is the pocket network, you would just type that. Uh, sorry for my English. <laughs> and you hit Enter. And what it will do, it will first show you a list of results, but also it will try to give you a summary of what you are asking. Uh, the idea of this page is to have everything from any time and from any kind of source. So, so let me go a little. So I have not studied how to present this, so bear with me. Uh, this search engine will first try to get from everything on the knowledge base. The knowledge base is for us is the the official documentation of Pocket and the GitHub code of the project. So those two sources for us are like the knowledge base. So whatever you ask anything, we will try to answer your question or exactly to summarize your query. That's the the exact terminology using those two sources, because we found out that they are the, the most accurate normally. We excluded the forum because there is a lot of noise there. But you can have a summary of your answer. We try to give you a quick answer and then create a more refined answer that will expand on the, on the query that you did. So you can go ahead and read this. All this is created based on what you see here below. So. This tool first makes a search, and if that search has any meaningful data, so you have searched something that is actually in the documentation, like what is the pocket network, it will try to give you a summary of your answer, and then it will try to improve on that but by adding more and more sources. So you will get that from an LLM, a large language model. So this might or might not be correct, because we all know that these things can hallucinate a little bit, so use with care. The specific part that I think it will be really interesting is that you have all the search results down below. So if you go here, you will get a list of all the documentation, for example, that has something that is talks about what you look for. And it's all ordered by the score of the match, how much the, the content of this documentation matches your query. And you don't have only the forum. You can have a lot of sources. For example, you can look in Telegram, for example, only and ask what is the pocket network to the Telegram. And it will, this time, give you an answer. But coming from someone, in this case, someone that talked in the, oh, sorry, I'm not logged here. but. It will give you the link to the Telegram to where is this base that answer. So, 
And if you don't like that, you can also, if you don't want to have the summary interrupting you all the time, you can disable it here. And you can also search for specific terms. For example, if you want to know if this email has ever been uh, shared among your community, you can directly search that and just put all the sources here and hit enter. And it will make you a, a search, not semantic search in this case, it will be a literal search. It will look for any word that you put here and try to find an exact match of it. And as you can see, it's over here, the mail. I, I don't know exactly, but it should be around here. So this tool is useful for anyone that wants to find anything specific for the network, and also for anyone that wants to answer specific questions about the pocket network or how is the DAO composed. Some stupid, answer, some stupid questions for people that have been here a lot, uh, but are maybe really dif difficult for someone who just started in pocket. So I think what we are trying to do here is to create like this first stop, this point where you can tell anyone, if you don't know something about pocket, you can go here. And what we are want, what we want to do it is not to leave this here. We want to improve on this. So that's why you will find a lot of these thumbs up, thumbs down here to provide us with feedback. For example, if you, in the previous question, for example, if you look uh, how to set up a node. Yep. It will point you to the zero to node. And if you think that this answer is, uh, is correct, you can go directly to the and hit the thumbs up. And that will provide us with feedback so we can build our models with this. What we are aiming to do next is to create our own chatbot with this so you can interact like you interact with ChatGPT, for example, but a chatbot that has access to all the knowledge of Pocket so you can ask and re-ask questions about the Pocket ecosystem and also integrate it with the pocket scan data. So you can query, for example, what's the latest, uh, how many relays were done last week, for example, and answer that kind of questions. That's the next steps that we, are want, to, we want to do with this. So you know, we are very excited to announce this and we, are, and we want to know what you think about. So uh, we will share this after this call, I will make a post and I will try to share it on all the com on all the channels that we have. Um, so, well, I think that's it. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, I will share the link right now so you can start testing it and see if it explodes or not. We want to test our backend, obviously, because it has not been tested <laughs> too much. This is amazing, Ramiro. I think it's a, a really uh, fantastic start. Um, I love the fact that we are dog fooding LLMs as part of you know our consideration around LLM support moving forward. Even though that's currently something that's you know more in a theoretical stage, but us using LLMs internally in the community is certainly uh, something that helps us see the benefit and and leads towards a greater support for the concept. I think. Uh, I did find that there was a pretty significant fail on the search. I went ahead and dropped a screenshot there in chat for you. Uh, we'll have to resolve that as quickly as possible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, it, that's because you only <laughs> signal the knowledge base. If you put community, it should appear right. Oh, I see. I see. You you gotta have the octopus in the knowledge base, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's there, but it's not. In, it's not oh, look, look! It was user error. I I fully accept. Yeah. That. <laughs> you have to you have to add it to the documentation. You can just add a page there, and we will track it in no time. So you can have your your own description. Beautiful. Yeah, we also have the call transcript. So everything that's talked in the in these calls for example that's why i always ask for the craig 
you can Whoa. if you put pip twenty two discussion. It will point you okay, to the pip twenty two. That is discussion. pretty amazing, I have to say. Yeah, and not only that, it will tell you exactly at what time it this was. Uh, oh, we don't have that. We we'll have we have the exact time stamp of who said this and when. Uh, so you can go directly to the YouTube. You, we we are lacking that right now because there we should have a link to YouTube here. Yeah, something to improve upon. <laughs> yeah, you have to be hit everywhere. Everything he's ever said on a call in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have also Discord, and we will try to add author search in the future too. Zach, uh, when he showed the community stuff, it did show uh, Telegram entries. Yeah. So yes, if you choose community here, and you go, you have Discord and Telegram, but you can just select Telegram by itself or call by itself. These categories here are like the we will have different sources in the same category, it's just to make easier for the user to to know what to search for if they don't want to go to Discord and Telegram. For example, we will add Twitter later to the community uh, selection or oh, umbrella category also. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's an excellent question, Zach. Uh, we have another thing that we are preparing and we have almost ready and we'll try to ship as soon as possible is the calls transcripts. After each call, create the transcript and post it in like a news site within Nix. And also have uh, by day or by week uh, summaries of what the community have been talking about in the different chats and, and add that to the news channel. We, we want to create like a news channel for people who want to sync from time to time with Pocket and want to say, okay, well, what has been the, the topic of the community this week? So they can go there, go to Nix, hit the news site and, and read a little about what's been commenting in the community. Um, Sutter asking, you have an ultra search in the future? I don't understand that, sorry. <laughs> um, and Golub, if this will be available in language other than English. Uh, actually, you can ask this in Spanish and it will try to answer you. Well, I'm missing a D here, but... Ah, sorry, it's knowledge base, the best one. Up uh, and uh, be more, this should, no. Oh, it's failed. Some questions you can make it uh, answer in another language, but no, it's specifically done for English, US, and yeah. We, I think we should start exploring other languages, specifically Korean. <laughs> we have lots of folks from there. Um, but no, the, the, the language model that we are using for the semantic search and everything is just for English right now. Yeah, Spanish too, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and Korean are probably our top three targets on uh, um, full language translation for a bunch of our stuff. So anything that the LLMs can do to help with that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we definitely look into it. but. There are so many things that we can do with this that, yeah, we have a big backlog. <laughs> of oh, I imagine, I imagine. And, and I am extraordinarily impressed with what you guys have accomplished so far from a, you know, a public beta release. This looks amazing. Uh, yeah, and I think it's important to note that this is not the, the end thing that we want to do. I, we are going also to present this next, our blog, we are, we, are, we separated this from Pocket Scan because it's another product and it will be another thing. So then you can go ahead and read this. This will be also the text that we'll have in the post in the forum. But what we are aiming to do here is to show the, first the community what we can do with the LLMs, how we understand them, and advanced upon this knowledge that we are creating. and start create something that I've been talking a lot with uh, Olshansky is that 
all the movement around using LLMs inside the bucket network has a lot of in important details that we are missing. We, I have talked about that a little in the forum post of Coder, but uh, what we want to do is to advance in that path, in the path of using like this decentralized intelligence of of this using the these models, machine learning models with the pocket network. How can we create those AI RCPs that we all talk about? AI, sorry, uh, RCPs that we all talk about and make them effective, not to serve garbage. How can we control what is going to be in the network? How we create that total we make it easy for a developer of of a, a product like this to use the pocket network instead of the open AI endpoints. So what we want to do is to go there with Nix. Is it's going to be the the our first step in making possible for the pocket network to serve efficiently uh, machine learning RPCs. I will share also this blog for you if you want to read. And of course, please add, uh, join here, sync up to the newsletter where we are going to to push some notifications about what we are building. And also we will try to make this blog a little bit more technical if you like that also to show what we are working on. We have lots of ideas in this field of decentralized intelligence like they call it we've had like oh, five the, people now ask what does phoenix mean okay yeah if you go to to the information oh this is a big detail it, up here in the next page you have this information that no user reads but it will explain <laughs> you how the page work and at the bottom there is a small about and it will actually talk about the what's the next the next is we choose that because the next is a, it's a place it's an actual place in greece where the philosophers and the great minds of the 500 before christ met to discuss ideas and the the idea behind what we think that the the language models will be in the pocket network is exactly that for example it will be a gathering of people offering their knowledge as machine learning models in a permissionless way. So everybody could go up to the next hill and and share that knowledge and, and everyone can be there. So that's the philosophy behind the name. And I think it's a good fit to to what we want that is democrat democratizing the access to the to these AI RPCs. That is awesome. And I, I also love that reference. And it's also cool, and I like Greek letters. <laughs> so it all makes sense. <laughs> hey, man, there's something to be said about the cool factor in naming products. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's amazing, we'll have to I'm, I'm, I'm once again uh, deeply impressed uh, with, with the work that y'all do. Oh yeah, and uh, let's see if it doesn't explode in this. <laughs> With all your requests, it will be awesome to get all your feedback, and we are open to it. We are we have a, a new Discord channel just to pipe all the feedback that you may have from this, and yeah, we want to train our own models and be able to to share them on the Pocket Network. That's that's uh, our our dream. <laughs> But yeah, so any other questions? So we are open. Beautiful. Any questions about that? Right. Thank you all then. And we can discuss anything. <laughs> Excellent. I think this is something that we're going to need to add to our uh, Rose shortcuts uh, in the Telegram groups as well, so that they know to go there. Yeah.
Okay, well, if there's no other questions about that, we've got, uh, we're coming up close on the top of the hour, but if anybody's got any last questions or thoughts or concerns or anything else they'd like to share, uh, well, we've got time. Now is it. Well, looks like that's our call for today. Appreciate y'all joining and uh, looking forward to having y'all here next week. There's going to be a lot going on next week with DevConnect. So stay tuned and plugged in and uh, we'll be talking about some of that on next week's call.